I never touched a guitar until I was like maybe 18. Every every waking minute, you know, I you know I'd be playing the guitar. Didn't matter if I was playing anything, you know, noteworthy or not. I was, you know, it could be just noise. But I had my hands on that guitar, and I'd sit there and listen to like just what the, the tones were, you know, what, what what part of the string was doing what, you know. If I picked over here, if I picked over here, if I played up here, or if I played that same note back here, you know, things like that. I started kind of figuring it out. And I was, I guess you could say, a working musician for a while, you know? And I started like getting into the partying and getting into the drinking and, and it was pretty much just that whole lifestyle, you know? It was like that for a few years and it was just crazy, you know? And it was all, I was either doing, you know, a lot of just basically screwed up party stuff or I was playing really, really, really brilliant guitar. And I was either at the highest peaks or I was at the, you know, the lowest valleys on this. You know, I did, I lived the blues, you know, I was like, I put myself through it, I put myself through all of this stuff and it was all based on drinking and I just did a lot of stupid things and to the point where, I mean, I ran into a school bus drinking and driving. And then the rumor was I was dead. You know, they thought I got killed in the crash. And um, then the next week out of the hospital, I go downtown and I win the first, or this actually the second time they'd had this that I knew of, Guitarist of the Year. And they said it was for the state, you know, statewide. I beat like 40 guys in competition. And that's what I'm talking about, like the, the lowest lows and highest highs, you know. When Casey's Golden Pheasant was around, I made it to virtually every Monday night blues jam that they had, probably since 1990, and I don't remember when it closed up, but that's a lot of Mondays. That's a lot of Mondays, rain or shine, I was there. I want to be one of those kind of people that puts it out there every night. And if I die on the way home, whatever they heard that night, that's what they'll remember for all time. And I wasn't gonna die a statistic. That's why I quit drinking. You know, I quit drinking July 4th, 1994. And I wouldn't say it's been easier. I wouldn't say it's been better. Because when you're drunk, you ain't got to feel nothing. And you know, when you're sober, you feel everything. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm not dead. You know, I didn't kill myself like a lot of the people that I knew when I was first coming up. I went through a lot of different, you know, events in my life that shaped who I am. I live like it's going to be the last time I do a lot of things. Because I've known people that, are, that were here and they're gone, you know, unexpectedly. I lost my brother, my mother, and, you know, it started to shape a lot of my philosophies on life, which in turn shaped a lot of how I played and how I approached my playing. 
If you really like listen to what happens during one of my shows, there's a lot of tones. It isn't just based on one tone. And it's and there's a lot of ferocity in my playing, but then there's a lot there's finesse when it needs to be that way. Because there's things being said with that music that nobody's ever gonna be able to translate. They just feel it and they they, they play off of it. It shapes what they're doing. I gotta do my best every time I go out. I gotta be the best representation of my people that I am because the only time anybody ever sees any natives around, even in Billings, is if they were to drive down Montana Avenue and see one of those guys walking around. So that's sometimes that's the only only person that they ever see that's got that color skin, you know? And that's where I came from. I've been there too. And I play hard, you know, I, I, live, I do, I live hard and I fight for everything every day. Every day. I, I put myself out there, I stick my neck out for people, I talk for people, I stand in front of people to make sure that nobody gets to that person. Almost literally, I do that, you know, for my people. You know, you know it doesn't matter, for the most part, if they're Crow, which, which is the tribe that I come from, or if it's, you know, across native country, because what happens in native country is if one native wins, that guy won that day. But if one native loses, we all lost. Well, the way I look at it, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if I put traditional music, you know, per se, you know, where I come from. People ask me that a lot. How come you don't put this music in with this music or you don't write about the birds and the trees and the mountains and the, you know? I don't have to. I don't have to. Regardless of where I'm at, I am what I am, you know? You can't wash this off. It's undeniable. You know, I have that, I have that, that skin tone that pretty much identifies what I am. Maybe not necessarily where I come from, but I don't have to do that because I play with my heart. Like I said before, I'm almost like a crusader for people's rights to be able to do what they want to do, say what they want to say, pray how they want to pray. Even if I don't. You know, that's why I got into the legislative part of our government on the Crow Reservation, to be able to, to give people that voice. I took four years out of my prime to be able to do this. You know, it's just the way it is. If you don't sacrifice for your community, then what's it all for? Really, what's it all for? You could have all the money in the world. You could have all the status in the world. But if you didn't help anybody out, it's for nil. You got to give it back. You got to give it back. You got you to gotta put your heart out there. You have to do that. You know, they tell people, go out there and come back and teach us, you know. So a lot of those same people don't necessarily live by that creed, even though they like to sell it. Me, I go back and try to force feed these people if I have to, but, you know, it doesn't work out like that. But I try, because somebody might be listening. And it's not about music, it's not about entertainment, but it's about, like I, said, like I said earlier, the accomplishment. Does that individual that sees what I do to the degree that I do it, because I do it, you know, do they see themselves going into a different field? Do they see themselves going into something else? 
and having that accomplishment. Could be college, could be some other some other kind of certification over here, or it could be, you know, it doesn't matter. As long as whatever they feel they can do, they're gonna do. Because the rest of the world is doing what the rest of the world's doing. A lot of people a lot of people at home are are okay with the complacency. They're okay living that stereotype. Whatever stereotype it is, there's tons of them. But I'm not going to be one. I'll work until I fall over. I'll go until I fall over. I'll play until I die. But as far as how does it relate to my nativeness, you know? I'm a new breed. With old values. It's about getting out there and just getting it done. They're not gonna say I'm not what I am. People are gonna know that the Indian guys come home and play guitar, you know? That's what it is. I may not be a warrior in the same sense that a lot of these people are warriors by going to, to war, actually, but there's a lot of psychological warfare in this world, and I fight that a lot, too. But I'm proud of who I am and what I, what I am. But I want more people to feel that way about themselves as well. Or else I wouldn't try so hard. I wouldn't stay home and try to make sure that people have choices. But I stay home, somebody's gonna see this. You can be what you wanna be. <laughs> I'm Jared Stewart from the Upsala Nation.